Hey guys, how are you? I hope you're all doing very well. This evening I'm going to be doing a review of a drama from Australia, English language. Well, the majority of it is in English language. There's a little bit in subtitles, but you don't have to intend with too many. So majority is English language. Released in the year 2009, directed by Robert Connolly, and this film is called Balibo. Now, Balibo is based on a real story. It features five uh, reporters, one from the uh, New Zealand, one from England, and the rest from Australia. Now, this is on the eve of the Indonesian takeover of East Timor in 1975. So those of you who aren't brushed up on the history of that part of the world. East Timor was taken over, invaded by Indonesia, and it was a very bloody sort of takeover, and it cost many people their lives. So East Timor were trying so hard to get this uh, um, the attention of the superpowers of the world to try and put a stop to it. So Jose uh, Ramos Horta, who has since become a Nobel Peace Prize winner, he was searching for someone to help him. So he got the services of five reporters from Australia. As I said, there's a few other um, nationalities amongst them, but it's from that area. So uh, Ramos Horta here requests that they come over to East Timor, that they document what's going on so the world can open their eyes to it. So they were known as the Balibo Five because the last time that these reporters were seen was in the area of Balibo in East Timor. So they've just gone missing, disappeared without a trace and this gets the attention of Roger East who is a very well known uh, reporter of, from that time in Australia. So he's in Darwin and Ramos Orta he contacts him and he says he could really use him in the news agency in East Timor so that he could produce stories detailing the atrocities that have been committed. So when Roger East gets over there he is uh, debriefed about what's going on and this is where he wants to find out what happened to the Balibo Five. He's got a suspicion that they may have been murdered but he wants to find out the truth. Now what makes this difficult is the fact that this is on the eve of the Indonesian invasion so that puts everyone's life in great danger and what happens from that point on that's something you're going to have to find out for yourself because that's as far as I'm going with my synopsis. Now my thoughts on Balibo. This is an extremely controversial film. It was banned in Indonesia. Now I think that is a really bad move for Indonesia because I feel that you need to learn the lessons of the past. And by banning this film from the Indonesian public, I think it leaves the door open for doing it again. It's kind of like Indonesia are not accepting what they did in the past was wrong. and They just want to dodge responsibility. And I think that's a very dangerous thing. Now, I've, countless films have been made about the, the German, the Nazi regime. And they haven't been banned because the German people need to know about the history they need to know about the mistakes so they're not repeated. The only real mistake is one that you don't learn from. So I think that it's leaving the door open for Indonesia to do this thing again because banning it, I feel, is dodging responsibility. If the whole of Indonesia watched this, Yes, it is a bad sort of time in Indonesian history, but it's something that has been done. You can't change it, but you can make it a better sort of... You, you can redeem yourself through making um, inroads into um, you know better relations between East Timor. So I don't agree with the fact that it was banned. A lot of people absolutely hate this film. They say it's very uneducated, it's very inaccurate, and that it's just a hatred towards Indonesia. I think that's missing the point. I think that's taking it too much to heart. Yes, it is a movie that shows Indonesia as the bad guys, but in this case... Indonesia were the bad guys. They invaded this country. They, you know, killed a lot of people. And I could get hatred for this myself, but I am just saying the truth. Yes, there may have been minor creative liberties, but the overall story is very true, and that is based in fact. It's history, and it's there for all the world to see. So denying that this um, happened uh, is very, very wrong. So the overall story, Indonesia did invade East Timor. You can't dispute that. Roger East existed. You can't dispute that. The Balibo Five existed. You can't dispute that. So those main points of the story are very true. But as I said, for a film, it may have taken creative liberties. I don't know. I wasn't there. But for a movie... Yes, it does take creative liberties. It has to sell. It has to make, you know, it wouldn't be a film if it was absolutely fine printed in, in all detail. But I felt that the overall story is very true. So it's not being irresponsible. It is making a film that is very eye opening. It's showing the world the atrocities, you know, of some people, what human beings can do to other human beings. And I think that by pushing it aside and absolutely hating it is not really giving the film justice because it's not a movie that's trying to give you hatred towards a country. It's a movie that's showing you the mistakes of the past and that how we can learn from it and make sure this sort of thing never happens again. So as I said, you know, you don't forget your mistakes, you learn from them, otherwise they become real mistakes. So I really like the fact that the director had enough balls to show the world for what it was and what happened in East Timor and how ravaged the country was and how unstable everything was as well. So there's a real sense of suspense in the film. It is a very political movie, 
but it has a very fine level of suspense thrust into it as well, which I really, really liked. I love the fact that some scenes were spine tingling and the violence isn't graphic, but it's very hard hitting because it shows you the aftermath of what the Indonesian uh, troops did to these people. There's children who were murdered. There were women who were murdered very, very coldly. And it shows you kind of like, um, that it's kind of like inhumane behavior towards another human. And it's scary to see that what human beings can do to each other. And that was something that you get in Schindler's List or Downfall, German, uh, the German film, is that it shows you how bad humanity can get and it's a very dangerous thing to push that aside. So that's why I, you know, I don't like the fact that it's been banned in Indonesia whatsoever. That is my opinion. If you are from Indonesia, I don't mean any offence. But as I said, it is a, it's, it's been done. It's happened. It's history. And the best thing we can do is move on from it and make it a better place. So yeah, the storyline will hit you very, very hard. But I feel that yes, it does take sides. But I think it's warranted. I think it's fair. Uh, the acting was very good. Now, Anthony LaPaglia, I'm not usually a fan of him, but he does a very good job at portraying someone who genuinely cares, not only about the Balibo Five, but also the country. But it feels that the only way to get the attention of the big countries is to basically show stories about how that country itself is affected rather than the actual the country that is supposed to have the sympathy. So what I mean by that is it shows you that the big countries such as Australia at the time weren't prepared to do anything because they didn't see it as their business. So it shows you when is it right to step into a conflict for the hum our sake of humanity. It might not necessarily affect you personally, but for a country to when is it right to step in you know the, the atrocities against humanity surely there comes a time when you think to yourself right enough's enough i have to move in and that's very relevant to today uh, with uh, usa and syria a lot of atrocities are being committed in syria but when do you move in and then you've got the africa horrors that you see in the democratic republic of congo liberia all the massacres that take place but no one seems to be paying attention to it so if you are true about making the world a better place and for world peace then why aren't they focusing on places like the Congo? And in this time, 1975, East Timor was the place that a lot of people were saying, why aren't you basically intervening? So it will raise that question, and it's a very real question. And it shows you that the, the, the Indonesian army were funded by Australia. They were funded by the USA. So it kind of feels like even though we're allies, even though that we're the good guys, we're still funding the, the bad guys. Yeah, at that time, and it's and it's true. Uh, you know, the the rebels in Syria, they're being funded by um, the Allies. Uh, you know, the Syrian government have been funded by the Allies. So you've got these wars that aren't right, but you feel that even the good countries are um, involved in a way. So it makes it very scary, and it feels like they it's not so black and white, good guys versus bad guys. So that does raise the question. I thought it was very well done. Now, none of the questions, none of the political themes, and none of the suspenseful themes. It never gets in the way. The continuity is very, very good. The acting from Anthony LaPaglia was very good, as I said. The supporting cast of the Balibo Five, very well-known Australian television actors, but I thought they did um, very well with what they had. It felt like they had an opportunity on a feature film, and they took it with both hands, and they delivered a very powerful uh, performance, especially towards the end where things are going from bad to worse. You felt genuine fear for them, so that was really good. And then you've got the flashbacks. So um, the movie takes place with Roger east following what happened to the balabo five so in a little part you've got the the present and then you've got the very recent past so it was like three weeks earlier so as the movie progresses it chops and changes between the two and i thought the continuity was really well done because it doesn't focus too much time on the um past and it doesn't focus too much time on the present so as the movie progresses you're interested to see what the balabo five were doing just before roger east arrived and then it goes to the present. And then you feel that, you know, the, the clues are leading up to a very thrilling climax. And that's exactly what you get. So it is a movie in the same vein as Schindler's List, Hotel Rwanda, all those movies that show you the atrocities against um, uh, humanity. So very, very good movie. As I said, it's been very much hated, but I feel that it's a very important film. Cinematography was excellent. It had a very authentic 1970s feeling. The soundtrack was even better, and it's just a very harrowing film because um, it doesn't shy away from showing the truth, and that's the most important thing. I think for a film like this to work, it needs balls, and Robert Connolly certainly shows balls in making Balibo. So that's uh, overall I'm going to give Balibo four stars. It is another very good Australian film and it shows you what we can do from this country. So four stars for Balibo is coming highly recommended. Alright guys, that's my review. Hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, keep watching movies and I'll see you later.